insane, Hawkeye. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's some scary shit. Epic. It's gonna be great, man. This will definitely be the most air you've ever caught on a snowboard, I imagine. Fantastic. If I land it first time, just expect me to not stop. I'm just gone. Fucking powder landing, dude. Easy. It was a slow start to our big wave season. It took until January for some really big swells to show up. And then when it did, it was some of the biggest that I've ever seen. Just as I was getting all this momentum with these Peahi swells and finally getting comfortable again, it just shut off. Now that we're in spring, we're about to head out onto probably the most epic snow adventure that I've ever been a part of because I'm going with my hero, Travis Rice. After getting so many already amazing waves out of Jaws, like getting barreled, surviving it, it's not that it's no longer scary or doesn't feel good, but like that first ever has disappeared. The similarity between drawing big lines on a big wave to drawing big lines on a massive mountain, it's pretty much parallel. Hopping on the flight to Denver, then to Jackson Hole, and then we're gonna go to AK, Alaska. I'm hoping that whatever I learn from this trip can just carry directly over to the next big wave season. It is snowing. So we're in Jackson Hole right now and we're headed to Travis Rice's house. Travis Rice is one of the best snowboarders of all time. I think there is an absolute parallel with what I'm trying to do on big waves and what he's done on big mountains. And Travis was one of the early guys that were throwing down these giant maneuvers, doing stuff that no one thought was possible. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in Alaska and just seeing how gnarly he really is. Hey, yeah. what's up, Travis? How's Big it man. going? Welcome to the snow. Dude, thank you. Stoked <laughs> to be here. Hey, Jupiter. Come in. What's up, buddy? Give me skin. <laughs> so you did the classic red eye? Classic red eye, it's Denver here. It wasn't bad, I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the spot, huh? This is yeah. cool. This is the spot. I think we're basically one year ahead of you, right? You, he, are you two, Jupiter? I just turned two. No. The girls just turned one. Yeah. Look, 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 look. Hey, Willa. Willa. Hi, Senna. Good morning. <laughs> There's Willa. <laughs> Oh, yeah, two in one. Oh, you're pushing your at C <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> yeah, don't you worry. We're going to take good care of this guy. So classic. They're a lot of fun. When was the last time you rode? Uh, July of last year. <laughs> so, oh, this is the zone. Whoa, what? This is, is what this? I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking you need to. Uh... This looks pretty close to what we use in the ocean. This thing's pretty nuts. Is a snow surfer? What do they call these? Yeah, like a no board or... No board? Yes. Pow surfer. Pow surfer. Wow, yeah. this is cool. I bet Which you these does. would surf insane. Like Elias style, you know? <laughs> My background in the mountains and snow is very limited. Every year, every other year, I get up to the snow and snowboard. You know, it's just a great contrast to what I do on the water. But yeah, I have a lot to learn. 
you know, if uh, avalanche breaks or slab, you know, pops and you're in it, I think the first thing you do before you think about pulling an airbag is you try to get out of it. And, you know, we're going to take a conservative approach. You know, so we'll, conservative is a relative term, I suppose, but, um, like, whatever, we're, you know, we're up to have a fun trip. Yo, totally. This is going to be sick. Yeah, whatever you put me in out there, I'll put you in at Jaws, like the equivalent. So okay. it'll be a nice trade. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the one you want. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like the Alaska range, and then the, the coastal range is the Chugach. And so that's what we're going to be riding in. And we basically have the ability to, to ride, you know, mountains essentially in every direction. Insane. To be honest, I don't know what to expect. We're going to a place I've never been, and the potential is just beyond my scope. So, yeah, I mean, goal-wise, obviously, we're always hoping to do biggest turns of our lives when we go to Alaska. Yeah, I mean... Um, get into some free riding, but you want to get upside down, huh? I mean, if there's an opportunity to throw some tricks and stuff and get that comfort level with being able to put it down on snow, I mean, that's huge. I think most of all, it's like what I think I'm gonna learn on this trip will directly affect how I approach the next season, the next winter. It's the difference between doing the same thing I've done every year or going to the next level and doing something that I didn't even think was possible. Here we go. You know, Alaska is everything. We are headed southeast to the deserted we are clear left. I mean, the type of snow that you get there, the type of terrain that exists, all kind of come together to form the most dynamic, weird, and progressive snow conditions that are straight science fiction. Champ, we'll just want to take the take this lower landing. This one here. Yep, the big knob. Then we can come down to a snow check run. Okay, similar LZ. Yeah, I think for this first drop, and then we can kind of scout. Come take a look. Well, that's f steep. <laughs> yeah, you can walk down, and we can really see, see better. What the hell? You ride this? <laughs> Stepping out of my comfort zone is going into the mountains. Some of the scariest things in being in the mountain is just not knowing the mountain. How about you, Mark? <laughs> oh, I shot myself on takeoff. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I really enjoy taking people to places and watching them go through the full emotional process of trying to get comfortable in a place that, frankly, you shouldn't be comfortable. <laughs> And so basically, like when, when you look at a line like this, you have like a safety exit, like up to the right or across the gully to the left. Kind of get a better look at it over here. First run of the entire trip, when I was looking to my left and looking to my right, it was just a thousand feet vert. Oh. oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? And it was just the beginning of maybe one of the craziest adventures I've ever been on. All right, guys. Ties dropping in five. Oh God. I knew that coming up here, my limits were gonna be pushed. I could probably compare being in these mountains to the first time I ever surfed Jaws. I didn't know what was gonna happen. It was fear of the unknown. And you have to have the ability to kind of overcome that uh, resistance to go and just commit to it and trust your line. Yeah, that should be just like blower snow deep. So you can kind of come and just whack. Dropping. <laughs> stand on the top of that big old ledge and it's rolling over and you know I didn't think I was ever scared of heights and then 
I stood up there and I realized I might be scared of heights after all. Watching Travis, you can just see when he steps onto that ridge and he's trying to figure out his line. He's so just in tune to that. Everything else just falls away and that's really difficult to do. Dropping. It's why he is who he is, the best in the world. That was sick. <laughs> Made it look easy. You aired and then exited this way. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is extra credit. Kai is an incredible, intuitive athlete, but I was super impressed with how well he did stepping up a little bit each run and in his like approach, his confidence in turns, his you know situational awareness when we were getting some lines and had some slough. Yeah, he did amazing. Nice. Love, love. The dangers that are in these mountains in Valdez is just endless. There's a giant cliff you could fall off and die. There might be a crevasse along the way, slough, avalanches. I mean, the list goes on and on. When you're going to ride a line and you're thinking about danger before it, you need to ask yourself if you're ready to fall down this. You can ride this, but you can't fall. Can't believe it, the snow's sticking to the wall. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Like we're okay here, huh? And there might be like a little bit of a hole like up against the rock, so. Careful. Yeah. All right, Kai, dropping in five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, baby. This definitely gonna be slapping. Nice. I got him, he's out, he's fine. Yeah, buddy, way to ride that out. Oh, I'm good. Not that we're looking for it, it's not a cool thing, but that was your first avalanche? Pretty much. You freaking championed that. It Just was... stood proud, did the air, straight line through the freaking ice, you know, it ice chunder. It was turbo, <laughs> it was survival. I didn't know what was behind me and I wasn't about to find out. <laughs> Kai did so good. He did the right thing. He saw it go and he kind of hit the gas, aired the pillow at the bottom and like ran it out. <laughs> Seriously, that was, I, I feel like that was kind of his line of the trip. This was just like hucking at um, outer Sprax. Oh my God, there. And I went over, I like back flop, but this one just oh, broke that my did, leg. Broke your leg? No, but, but it, it looks felt like, like it. I haired out so hard. I could have gone way more double, but I was like single and then oh, God. just like foot strap. You just need to like, oh, like going back, it's like just 
Maybe open more. Just a, a tiny bit more open. <laughs> it's always been about doing something that no one's ever done before. And I'm kind of touching that next realm that everyone knew has existed, but no one's been willing to go try. Doing a double backflip at Jaws, I think that would be that monumental moment where it was a culmination of my entire pursuit into one moment. If I'm being totally honest with myself, getting the double onto a wave, it's kind of stalled a little bit, only because you just don't have that many opportunities. My hope is coming on this trip to experiment with it a little bit. It's like deep powder in Alaska is kind of the perfect scenario. The final day was gonna be the scariest, and I always knew that. You know, you got warmed up on the mountains and the level's gonna keep on rising. And so when we started actually building up this jump, I was like, okay, yeah, like, I got my mind wrapped around this. This is totally doable. But then the jump just kind of started getting bigger and bigger because we were digging deeper into it and it was to get that really nice transition and that real good snap off the top that would get me two rotations around. And I was just going like, oh dear. I'd never hit anything like that. It just seemed like I'd be sent into oblivion. I woke up in the morning, I'm like, gosh, I gotta just survive today. Yeah, Kai. If you're going for the double this time, speed's your friend. Copy that. Um, is everyone ready to go? Speed is on it. All right, here goes nothing, dropping in five. You all good? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's like the worst you could land, right? Like, head first? Yeah. You know, hitting something critical and just the environment and the speed that's needed even to, you know, hit something that's shaped by snow in Alaska, I don't know, there's like a level of warrior needed that you are prepared to just take a beating. Oh. 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 A little more speed. Yeah, that was better rotation. All right, well, it's getting better. Steep landing, just a touchdown, don't feel it. Oh. Woohoo! Dude, you got that around easy. Yeah, I kind of landed back in the saddle a little. Oh, let's fucking go stop it. Watching Travis hit the ramp, he was doing these crazy tricks. <laughs> Double rotations, landing so buttery. I was like, I gotta get two rotations around, and I know that I can land it smooth. Dude, that looks so good from behind. I burnt just a little too much speed. I probably just hit the tip by like that much, you know? So, oh well. I mean, dude, there's still time. All right, let's go. One more. Go the boys. When you're put against the wall like that, you have to step up. Okay, dropping in 10. Come on, buddy. He had laser focus on what he wanted to do, and I think that if he had gotten those like last tries in the beginning and had like a you know fresher landing, I, I think he would have stomped the shit out of it. Even though I didn't maybe come away with the cleanest double rotation, the fact that I was so comfortable going that fast at a ramp, flying that high and going that far, you know, actually aiming it to where you would need to land it on a wave is going to be far less scary.
This has been by far one of the most intense, dramatic, incredible trips that I've ever been a part of. My mind is absolutely blown. Dropping. Yeah. That was fun, man. All right. He's dropping in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Love you. Oh, my God. Oh, he's on that ridge line, dude. Oh, my God. Wow. He's under the waterfall. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to take the feeling and his approach that he had up in the mountains into the big waves. All right, I'm going to drop in five. Good kind of fun, dude. You. Biggest friend of your life. It seems to me from my experience within snowboarding, these limits that get pushed in different directions, even if that exact feat like wasn't exactly the like, oh, this is where surfing needs to go next. The fact that you push the boundaries of this greater movement, this greater bubble, like that is still pioneering.